I'm just going to feed some chopped worms and some dead maggots in my ground bait today. Right. I'm going to feed quite a lot because what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the long pole line and then I'm going to go on the waggler. So I need a lot of bait to be on the bottom for when the fish turn up. So I need to hold the fish there you know, for long enough for me to swap between the waggler and the pole to catch the fish. Right, so we're going to create a big bed of bait on the pole line which will give you plenty of time to fish the waggler, let the fish come over the top of that bed of bait, feed on it, get confident feeding on it and give you plenty of time to come in over that later on and start picking them off one at a time. Yeah, that's right. All the worms and maggots he's put in the ground mate now, he's, he's blended all those ingredients, added plenty of particles to the mix so you can form nice big balls to throw on his pole line and create that big bed of bait. What you got to try and do is try and make your balls exactly the same size. It does help a lot because when you come to throw them in, if you use the same action and the same sort of amount of pressure for throwing balls in, you'll go in the same sort of place. I've got my pole in my pole rest. It's nicely low to the water with a pole cup on the end of the pole as a target. A special pole rig set up today. Well, basically what we call it is call it the double bolt rig or a pop-up rig. Right. You've got your first bolt, which is your Olivet and a couple of dropper shot, all pushed up in one bulk. Just below that, you've got four number eight shot. The hook lies directly on the bottom with the bulk just above the bottom. So with the fish that we're fishing for, which are bream and skimmers, when they feed, they obviously invert to pick the bait up. And so when they invert, they pick the bait up and they rewrite themselves and pick the bulk up off the bottom, which then in turn makes the float rise out of the water and not go under. So it's a, it's a very good rig for catching lots of skimmers on when they're really confident feeding. So I suppose in theory, if you've got that second bulk very, very close to the bottom, when that float lifts, the only reason it does so is because a fish has picked the bait up and a fish has got it in its mouth. Yeah. So it's a very, very positive rig. Yeah, it's very, it's like almost 100% record fish. Every time the float pops up, you know, it's got to be in a fish's mouth. Yeah. Usually what happens when the float goes under, it's either either liner or basically by the time you've waited for the, um, obviously a proper bite, the elastics come out and they're off with it. You know, I'm quite an active angler and I like to be um, on the move all the time, so sitting and waiting for sort of two or three bites in five hours is not really my thing. The more and more you use the bait, the more and more you, it becomes part of your fishing. When you get to a certain situation, it's like, what shall I use here? And I'll, I'll just tweak it with a little bit of extra ground bait from another a bait tech product. You always seem to know what's going to happen with the bait you're using because, you know, you use it all the time. That's why it's so good. Well, we've got a brilliant method to show you now. It's got a long-range big waggler firing balls of ground bait over the top. This is a homemade waggler. It's pre-weighted, so you don't need any shot on the line. There's a flight on it, make it fly straight, and it obviously holds the bait up in the surface temperatures of the water. The float is attached to a snap swivel, which is running in between some sliding float stops. Now the sliding float stops are good in a couple of ways. They actually hold the float in position and you can alter the depth really, really quickly by just pushing the float stops together, which is better than obviously having split shot and stuff like that that you have to move all the time. Then running down the rig, we've got just a, a normal loop to loop. We've got a hook on there, which is a size 18 onto 020 line. And on the end of it, there's a what we call a bayonet or a boilie spike. Instead of trying to hair rig a boilie all the time, which is obviously a lot slower than uh, doing it like this, what you do is get a, a, just a cheap hook and cut the bend off the hook and then tie the straight piece of, um, of the hook onto the line. And all you do then is you push that into the boilie and that holds and you can cast that several times and it won't come off and it'll be ready for the fish to take. Bites on this method are extremely savage. Most of the time, you don't even actually look at the float. The float's actually there just to fire balls of ground bait at it. Right, we've got two rods set up today. We've got one for fishing boilies on and one for fishing maggots on. If they switch onto the maggots, we can pick the other rod up, three or four maggots on a hook, cast it out, and hope we can nail one on that as well. I'm gonna get out of the way. Let's watch Ian do his thing. Best you go every time. Within respects of being in the middle of a match, you can just change the consistency of the bait, it'll be able to do what you need it to do.